longer Ray 5 laser put it together in a previous video and there'll be a link at the end where you can view that if you like before I get into the serious testing and demonstrations and everything on this I'm gonna make some modifications show you coming up I'm Roger walking to the shop and I'm going to show here uh, a few of the things I'm going to do with this longer Ray 5 laser to uh, modify it, improve it, make it for my own use, however you want to put it. Some of the things I'm going to do is uh, mount it to a, a board and to do that it does come with these little feet right here. You can bolt on and then screw right to the board and it makes it permanent on the board. What I like to be able to do is be able to lift the laser off and maybe take it and use it somewhere else or use it on another surface or maybe rise it up to use with a rotary or I doubt if I'll use this one for a rotary but I want to have that option. To do that I make these little feet on the 3D printer and I'll be using that and I'll show you how well they work. Once they're in place and screwed down you can put the laser in, take it out, put it back in and it'll always be back in the same place because I'm also going to burn a grid under this piece of plywood uh, as what a lot of people call a spoil board and what I've done with a lot of the other ones is I'll put a piece of MDF on top of this plywood and then burn the grid on the MDF. In this case I'm going to burn it directly into the plywood. If that gets spoiled, that's why they call it a spoil board, then I will put a piece of quarter inch MDF over the top of that and just re-burn the grid. So what am I going to use for a grid? Well I was going to make one uh, I've done it for some of my other lasers. It's time consuming. Uh, this is a 410 millimeter square. Well, it just happened that Buster Beagle 3D already made a grid for the Ortur Laser Master 2 Pro, which is a 400 millimeter square. So I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I downloaded his grid off of uh, Thingiverse, and that's what I'm going to be burning on here. So it's 400 millimeter square I have to work with for my layout. That's close enough to 410. I don't need to go to the complete extremes and I don't need to spend a couple hours designing a new grid. So the first thing I need to do here is do a little bit of sanding on this board. Okay, this is nothing fancy. It's just a piece of shop grade 3 quarter inch plywood and it's actually a scrap and it just turned out that it was the right size. I didn't need to cut it. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to sand it to 120. Just to get it smoothed out a little bit, get some of the shop dirt off of it. As you can see, there are a couple splits in the veneer, but I don't think that's going to hurt anything, and it, it looks better than the other side by a long shot. Okay, right here are the feet I'm going to use. As you can see, there's a slot, and then there's four mounting holes. So it's just a matter of setting these in place. And I need to get the square with the edge of the board and get a couple screws in it. And I'm using number four by three quarter flatheads wood screws. Now I'll just do the same thing on the other side. While I've got this flipped around here, I'll show you one of the other modifications I made. Uh, there are two holes right here that you are supposed to tie this cable to with a cable tie. I wanted to keep this up in the air as much as possible so it wouldn't get down into my work. So I made this on a 3D printer. This is not made for this laser. It's made for something else and I had to modify it a little bit. But this keeps this up, so it doesn't matter which side you're on, 
that stays up and stays away from your work area. There's also two holes here, one on each side for uh, a place to put cable ties in to tie these cables up. I neglected to mention that in the assembly video. So I'll get these other brackets screwed down. I'm screwing the outside ones down uh, holes first and then I'll lift the laser off so I can get to the ones on the inside. The foot by the motherboard controller here does not go in quite as far but it still fits the uh, bracket just fine. Okay what I'll do now is I'll just lift the laser off and put the rest of the screws in. Little shop tip by the way, these are actually made to hold pills, but they are excellent for putting different size hardware in. Nice little dispenser hole in the top. Real handy. So with these brackets in there, like I say, you take the laser on and off of there and it always goes back into the same spot. And there we are. The okay, other little thing I'm going to do here is your, uh, your focusing spacer right here. It is 15 millimeters in diameter, which just happens to be pretty close to 5 eighths of an inch. I could see losing this or having it roll off somewhere. So what I'm going to do is using a Forstner bit, I'm going to put a hole in the plywood right here so this will sit in it. I'm not going all the way through. So the thing already rolled away. Oh, got it here. So that'll be its home. That way I won't be losing that. So next I need to get this set up to burn my grid. Okay, I'm going to need a set focus here because I'm going to need to focus it right on this board because that's where we're going to be engraving to. So I got the focus spacer there, put it in that little opening in the back. Loosen the two thumb screws. Drop it down till it just touches it, like so. Tighten those screws back down. That's about the limit for going down, too. You're not going to get down any farther than that, I don't think. Take my spacer back out, so now we're set for focus. Okay, here's a graphic I'm going to be burning into the uh, for a grid pattern. As I said, you can download this from Thingiverse. This is for the Ortur Laser Master 2 Pro. And I have one of those, and I've used this grid on there. It is 400 millimeter square. It's made by Buster Beagle 3D. And the G-code file is downloadable, and I opened it up. This is laser, laser gerbil here. So we'll get connected to the laser first. Yeah, why am I not connected? Oh, I don't have the USB plugged in. That's important. Yeah, I'll try this again. Yep, always works better when it's plugged in. And we are connected. So what I need to do first is I'm going to bring the laser to the lower left front corner. And then I'm going to frame this to make sure that this frame's okay and doesn't hit limits anywhere. While well, there are no limits, I want to make sure it doesn't bang into the stops. So we'll bring this over here. Front left corner. Now I will frame this. I have my speed set pretty slow because I don't want this ramming into something if it goes to uh, extremes. I need to move some of my cords out of the way here. Well, it didn't go ramming into anything, so I guess we'll get this thing started and do the engraving. Projected time on this is about an hour. Of course, I'm not going to video the entire hour of this engraving, but we'll do a little updates as it goes. And I got to open a door because this is going to make a whole ton of smoke.
there's my layout grid complete from the uh, file that was for the Orchur Laser Master 2, which I'm using on the longer Ray 5, and it's working out just fine for that. Now I need to add a couple things that uh, I use for what I make, and that is to add a couple more templates to the center. So to do that, I'll use light burn. Okay, so what I'm making here is a four and a quarter inch square using the center as origin. And I'm doing 1,000 millimeters per minute at 90% power with three passes because I want a good dark line because that is a layout I use for tiles. So I'll frame this first. And I'm going to fire that again to make sure it came back to perfect center, which I'm pretty sure it did. And it did. Just need to start it and burn it. Okay, and there we are. One. Okay, my next one is a four inch circle. I'll be using the same settings. So we will frame this. As it should be. And we'll start it and burn it. So the purpose of this grid on here is for layout. It, it helps you do things repeatedly. It helps you get things square. When your laser is fastened down and doesn't move around, you always have the same point. You'll always be able to come back to the same origin. So what I'm doing right now is I'm doing what they call a tile burn test. One of the things we do a lot of are laser engraved tiles. We sell a lot of them. And I need to, sometimes I need to produce a whole lot of the same kind. And for each laser I have, I do a burn test when it's new, just like I'm doing right here, which establishes a couple of things. One is what my settings need to be to laser engrave tiles on that particular laser, because even though they're all, say, 5.5 watts, they're all different. Everyone has a, its own little personality, so to speak. And it also gives me a benchmark. So let's say I engrave 100 tiles on here and things start to look uh, maybe not so good, I'll do another burn test and find out how well the uh, life of the laser head is. I did have one laser here a while back where after about 20 tiles, the head just failed, but it was a real cheap, cheap, cheap one. Uh, this is a higher end laser that I shouldn't have that problem at all, but I'm still doing this both as a benchmark and as initial test to see where my settings need to be to engrave tiles. And one of the things that I put onto that grid was my four and a quarter inch square so I could repeatedly put these in with a center origin without having to fool around. And one other thing I need to bring up, and it is regardless of the shield on the laser, if you're going to be looking at that, put your safety glasses on. Okay, so there's the modifications I made to the longer Ray 5 laser. Uh, you can also apply this to maybe your laser or another, another brand. It doesn't necessarily have to be the longer Ray 5. This is the one I'm getting all set up to do a whole bunch of uh, testing on, and maybe we'll put it into production on some tiles because I have an order that's come up. So that's all we've got so far with this laser here. I will be coming up with more videos here in the future, very near future, on engraving, of course, the tiles, signs, cutting, glass, a lot of the things we do here, I'll be demonstrating on this laser. So if you got anything out of these little mods, and maybe you can apply it to something you have, appreciate getting a thumbs up, always helps the channel. I'm Roger, in the shop, longer, Ray 5 laser. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.